Welcome back here, ladies and gents. Welcome back. Joseph James here. Welcome back to our crude oil morning prep, a very unique and very powerful way to begin your trading day. Every morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, we get together here this morning. I got my partner in crime, my better looking half, Mr. Marty Erico. Uh, don't forget to check out Marty and his partner Jeffrey at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time every morning. Check out tradersaudio.com for more information. And of course, don't forget, I run a live trade room every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Come check out our free trial on the website and join me in the trade room every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be trading crude, gold, euro, and of course the mighty Mini Russell. All righty, now that you know who's here, I'm a technical analyst. I'll begin this morning with a top-down approach, specifically focused on looking at what's happened over the past few weeks, the past few days, then I'll move to the past few hours. The top-down approach, I'm opening up charts. I'm here in my home office in Los Angeles, the corporate headquarters of schooloftrade.com. And of course, we've got our top-down approach, starting with the slower time frame, moving all the way down to the faster time frames. Specifically, I'm interested to see what's happened overnight. If I can look and see what happened overnight, typically, I can anticipate the direction at the open. And if I can anticipate direction at the open, well, I can find those high percentage trading opportunities starting as early as 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's the plan. We're going to start today with some slow time frames, move down to the fast time frames, look what happened overnight, find some support and resistance, find the direction, and then trade in that direction as early as 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Once I'm done with you, we're going to toss you all the way from L.A. all the way to NYC. We're going to go over to the NYMEX Exchange. Mr. Marty Erico braving the elements every morning, taking boats and trains and, and automobiles and planes to get to, the, to get to that exchange every morning. You know, most day traders, we're spoiled these days. We wake up in our, in our uh, boxer shorts and, uh, and pajamas, right, and go to work. Well, of course, we, we're very thankful to have Marty here with us every morning. He's, in the, he's got his feet on the ground on the trading floor. And, of course, looking at market direction, intermarket divergence, market internals, option prices and those always important pit session trading levels. Now, make sure you pay close attention when Marty's talking about two important things. First of all, intermarket divergence. This is a very, very useful set of clues that we've been picking up on, that hidden language between crude oil, Arbob gasoline, heating oil, and Brent crude futures. These are very, very important correlations, so look for those. Marty will talk about that here shortly. And then just before he finishes, he'll talk about his pit session trading levels. Remember, the session levels that are used in the trading floor are oftentimes very different than what we see on the screens. I was just talking to Marty before we kicked off the call today, and him and I have a different opinion of where this price is going, right? All because we're using different resources. He's looking at the trading floor. I'm looking at a monitor. And again, together, we're going to put together a very powerful way to kickstart your day. That's the plan today, guys. Let's get started. First things first. We need to know the lay of the land today. What's happening? What do we have to worry about out there today? And we're going to first get started here this morning by looking at today's news. Hold on one second. Uh, yep, there we go. All right. Looking at the news here this morning, head on over to SidewaysMarkets.com. SidewaysMarkets.com is our trading blog. You'll find all the information there. You can also watch a daily recap video on the crude oil squawk and prep. We're going to be updating that blog page here very, very soon. Moving forward, though, we have seen a... Uh, a, a very interesting development today coming out of Syria. Of course, of course, coming out of Russia, we've heard news of a proposal that Syria put its chemical weapons under international control or destroy them. What might be even more interesting is the fact that Iran and China both came in and said we approve of that, of that uh, proposal. So apparently there is less of a chance for a military strike than we actually thought. Now everybody apparently has put their thinking caps on right, rather than listening to the news media. And, of course, that has been showing more risk acceptance, right? People are coming into the market now with a little more appetite for risk because now that strike in Syria is a little bit less, is a little bit more on the horizon, a little bit distant. We still have President Obama here in the U.S. today meeting with Republican senators today. Remember, he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to rally support. He's got six different primetime TV interviews this evening here in the United States. That, of course, would be late, late night in Europe. Uh, early morning tomorrow in Asia. So President Obama, later on today, that'll be eight, nine, ten hours from now to check the, uh, the TV listings here today. But we know that we will be hearing from Obama today. Obama will be putting on the full court press. 
trying to relay or, or rally support for this uh, military strike in Syria. It'll be very interesting to see what we hear coming out of the U.S. today with Obama most likely doing his, you know, making his rounds today. As always, once again, we keep watching this Chinese retail uh, or Chinese news coming out of China overnight. We've got retail sales hitting seven-month highs. Uh, it's very clear right now that the overall global economy is improving. It is very, very clear the economy is improving uh, over the entire planet right now. Traders continue to talk about looking forward to the September 17th FOMC meeting. That is next Wednesday. If you're wondering why price action has been a little bit contained the past few weeks, that's exactly what they're waiting on right now. Non-farm payrolls was just one of the aspects. That was last Friday, of course. Uh, Non-farm payrolls, we're going to have some more news coming out this week. And then, of course, next week, we got the FOMC meeting on the 17th. It appears that everybody has kind of pushed their expectations into that September 17th FOMC meeting. So, again, everybody's focused on Fed tapering. Everybody continues to be worried about what's going to happen with the Fed. Are they going to start, are they gonna start uh, basically tapering off their stimulus? And, of course, that will change everything. We'll hear more about that September 17th. Uh, we heard from the EIA, the International Energy Association. Uh, the head of the EIA was, was quoted as saying the oil market is sufficiently supplied this morning. Uh, and, of course, crude oil prices have tumbled overnight. Uh, also heard this morning, uh, and we'll let Marty talk about it as well, OPEC as well this morning commenting that the demand on crude would be down. So we heard from OPEC overnight that the crude oil demand is down or they're projecting demand to be down in 2014. We then hear, so demand being down from OPEC, we then hear the supply is fine from the IEA. So no wonder crude oil prices are under pressure to move lower this morning. We've got some fundamentals now kicking in that are pushing prices lower. Now, when, you look, when, you, when we learn about the fundamentals on crude, when we learn about the IEA and OPEC's comments pushing prices lower, now we begin to look for technicals to enter into positions that will help us capitalize on that, right? Relatively simple strategy. Looking at the news this morning, we first begin by, by asking ourselves what day of the week, what week of the month, what month of the year. Real quickly here, we know that today is a Tuesday, second week of the month, and this is the month of September. We know historically the month of September is one of our best months out of the year. The fall is always one of the most exciting times to be a trader. We know that the second week of the month is oftentimes a little bit empty. It's oftentimes a little bit barren. You can see there's not a lot of news here. We had no news yesterday, no news uh, today. We have, of course, inventories tomorrow, and then we finally get some Red Star news on Thursday and Friday morning. All right, But, of course, second week of the month comes after non-farm payrolls on the first week of the month. Second week of the month, it's not the first week. It's not the last week. It's not the third week, which would be OPEX. It's, of course, going to be kind of the middle of the road. Then, of course, we move over to Tuesday. Tuesday is one of those days where we don't have anything expected. We're not expecting to see inventories, right, like we usually get on Wednesdays, jobless claims on Thursdays. It's not a Monday. It's not a Friday, right? Tuesday, second week of the month, meh. It's kind of middle of the road, right? Nothing really major that springs up. Nothing that we should be concerned about that, 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 that uh, screams off the page here. The only real news we have today is going to be this jolts report at 10 a.m. Uh, it's a very minor report. You can see there's no star, right? So we look for the reports that are starred. Uh, Red star, of course, being the most important news. And you can see here we're not too concerned about that news this morning. So the big concern, right, the big news is the lack of news today. So no news Monday, no news Tuesday. That means all eyes and ears are going to be focused on what's coming out of the White House, what's coming out of Capitol Hill, what's coming out of the Fed, and this, of course, soap opera that continues to develop, right, coming out of Syria. I think, I think we're in for a, a big drop here this morning, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that we've had a big jump up over the past three weeks. This news out of Syria, if you remember, pushed prices all the way up. And, of course, if you remember what we said earlier, right, remember we said when the prices were rising two weeks ago, we said, guys, just wait here patiently. It's going to come right back down, right? We always see these geopolitical news events. They spikes up crude, and then sure enough, we get a chance to sell it short. It always takes the stairs up and the elevator down, right? So it goes slowly up and very quickly down. All right, so here's what we're looking at today. 
we got a couple big clues here on this VIP chart of crude oil. 30-minute chart, one of my only time frames that uses time. All right, I don't use a lot of charts that have time. This is one of them, though. Now we're going to look at this as three clues. First clue, we got yet another very narrow range coming out of London. Now remember, a narrow range tells us to expect additional narrow ranges until something changes. So what usually happens is when a narrow range coming out of London, we're used to seeing about a dollar move out of London, we get a measly 47 cents, less than a half dollar move out of London. That is pathetic for the trading range. Now again, when you think about what would a narrow range tell us? A narrow range tells us that, that there are either fewer people watching or there are fewer people participating. We know right now tells us that there are fewer people participating right now. Why? Well, probably because they're waiting on something. If we see a narrow range, it tells me the buyers or the sellers, neither party has confidence. So while, while the world waits to hear what's coming out of Obama's mouth today, what's coming out of uh, Russia's news, what's coming out of Syria, as the world kind of holds its breath here ahead of this possible Syrian military attack, okay, we know that traders are looking for more information. That's resulting in these narrow ranges. Now as the news starts to come out, now as we start to hear headlines and quotes from politicians, we'll start to see some reaction to what we don't have to work with already this morning. So the first things first, narrow range tells us, expect a little bit of a narrow range here as we open up. But just as I say that, though, you can see the market now has begun to widen. We tumble here now below the previous low of day. This is a very bearish clue. That enters me in short down to 107.13. So now that I am below the previous low of day, that tells me bears are definitely in charge. Remember we said earlier, it's very powerful to combine a technical clue with a fundamental clue. What was the fundamental we saw? The fundamentals we heard from OPEC. We heard from the IEA. Both of those agencies said prices should be lower. Less, right? Less demand, more supply. That's why we're seeing prices go lower this morning. Also add in the fact that the Syrian conflict is now on the back burner, right, at least for the time being. Who knows how that soap bumper will develop. And this continues to make sense. It makes sense here now that we have prices going lower. Now, we know very easily now what direction we're going to be trading in. Where are our targets? Targets are going to be at 107.13, 106.58. I'm sorry, 106.77, 106.58. And I personally think that we are going to see 104.21. 10421 is my previous week's low, right? That's the low of last week. So a very, very powerful clue down there. Because again, if boy, if this thing takes off, if we start hearing from the Fed, or I'm sorry, from Obama this morning, all right. If we start, if we start hearing from Obama, if this starts to look like the Syrian conflict is going to be uh, pushed farther back, I have a funny feeling traders are going to take some profit here, and we're going to see this thing move possibly all the way down to 104.21. That's where my home run target is today. All right, that's where my home run target is. I'll be taking short-term targets here, and then of course looking to sell, sell, sell. And that target here may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow, but I'm looking at 104.21 here. I think we're going to see a pretty big drop today. It feels like one of those days we don't have a lot of news to work with. And, of course, with all these fundamentals coming out right now telling us that we should be selling short on crude, I just have a funny feeling that the masses, the general population, is going to pick up on this pretty quick here later on this morning. All right, moving forward here. This really is the only reason that we have a little bit of a – kind of a guessing game here as far as when we're going to go lower. Again, I projected 104 and a quarter, right? As you can see here, to get to 104 and a quarter, we've got to really, really tumble. We're going to have to make it through this major support zone at 107.61 to 106.69. But look at all the wide open space we have if we can get below it. Look at that wide open space. So, of course, you know how the drill goes. We sell short off the highs. I told you guys it was going to happen yesterday morning. If you were listening to my broadcast on Monday morning, we talked about the break, the test of the 110.52. We talked about get below the cloud, and we're selling short down to, yep, you got it, 107.61. So here we are now this morning. Everything we projected came true on Monday morning. Now we're going to sit here. We're going to wait, let this price consolidate. Once it falls out of bed, then we got them. We're going down short to 104.21. You can see it makes perfect sense down here now. There's the low we're shooting for. 104.21, all right? So I might be wrong, 
If I happen to be wrong this morning, it won't be the first time or the last time. If we happen to see a rally coming off of this, I will have to abandon my, uh, my, my uh, directional bias, the downside right now. Bottom line, if we go back above that previous low of day, remember that previous low from the 30-minute? If we get back above that previous low of day, 108.21, 108.21, then we know those buyers are back in charge. Okay, so we stay below 108.21, we're looking shorts. Again, we've got the we got the support zone here. That is going to cause a problem for us this morning, most likely. But again, I'm keeping a close eye. If we can get below this channel, again, we'll then look for the sell short. If it happens to bounce and we see a rally, wait for that market personality. I'll be buying that thing all the way up because, again, as you can see here, that is a pretty significant uh, support zone. Moving forward here now, I move down to a faster time frame. We sat for a while this morning at the 108.22 area. That didn't last very long. Now we're on our way down to test 107.46 and 106.69. If you recall, yesterday morning, we projected 108.82, right? Don't take my word for it. Go back and watch the tape. We record all of them. That way you can see. Put my money where my mouth is. 108.21 was called yesterday morning, eight hours before it was hit. Easy to find that short selling opportunity down to 108.22. And of course, in our live trade room, we call trades live for crude oil, 8 o'clock till noon every morning. 107.46, 106.69, those are the support levels below me. We got some more wide open spaces here, guys. Get below that 106.69, we're going short down to 105.60 to 104.95. And then there's my magic number, 104.21. You can see we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away, guys. If you think it can't happen, <laughs> take, take a look at days like this. Right? You don't think we can do that right now? Oh, absolutely we can. This ain't the S&P, uh, boys and girls. This is the black gold, right? The Texas T. All right, guys, that does it for me here. I'm looking to sell short this morning. I've got targets posted on the blog right now. All of my support zones, those are my targets for my short. Don't be surprised if we see that 104.21 by the end of the bell here today on the NYMEX exchange. Speaking of which, how are we looking out there, Marty? How's the pit looking this morning? You know, I'm always interested to see if my technical analyst matches up with the actual personality and the sentiment coming out of the trading floor of the NYMEX exchange. Marty, how are we doing today out there? Happy Tuesday to you. What are you seeing out there, man? What are your levels here today? Well, I got some good levels for you guys, first off. But really what we're seeing now is just kind of a lot of uh, chatter kind of developing. Now, remember yesterday as we spoke about uh, – we're not gonna. We're gonna be very concerned about what's happening, but we won't. We don't want to get fooled because there's gonna be a lot of noise opposed to news, right? The news doesn't really come out until, uh, you know, tomorrow and towards the end of the week. But we are getting some geopolitical chatter, right? Out of um, Russia, Syria, they've been speaking about handing over the nuclear weapon. I mean, uh, nuke, not nuclear. Um, handing over the chemical weapons to international control. Right, and we have David Cameron saying that's a great idea, the uh, British Prime Minister. But let's kind of move on to take a look at some pit session levels. Let's get the sentiment out of the pit. Let's look at the multiple market divergence as we spoke about yesterday. So first and foremost, right, the divergence that we saw, we kind of saw this evidence of a little bit of uh, downwards trading range. Right, we saw that downwards trading range, that sentiment yesterday coming out of the RBOB and the heating oil. Right, our bob and heating oil kind of gave us that first look evidence to downside yesterday because they had some significant down moves, and the our bob and heating oil are leading indications on the crude. They're just trading lower this morning. So far, if you look, look with me, you'll see uh, we have a low put in at about 274.35 on the our bob. Now we're at 276.71. Heating oil made it down to about 308 and a quarter. Right now we're about 308.25, so we're sitting at low prints. Now, looking at comparing the pit session chart, right, the pit session trading levels, double top, we saw a double top, first of all, up at that 110.60 level that we spoke about yesterday. Um, but you can see, right, we're going to open below this transitional area, right? This blue line was a transitional area. Now, this chart's not moving because it's a pit session chart. It opens at 9, closed at 2.30, so we get gaps. So we're going to have a significant gap lower as we're about to open up. Let's see here. What? 107.56? So... That's, we're going to be opening up down around 
that's huge. 107.56 is going to be a huge gap. So we want to remember we have support down below here, 106 and a half. We got 105 and a half support. If we break through those levels, yes, we're going lower. If we close and settle below 105 and a half, yes, we will see 104 and a quarter. Probably even 102 and a half. Because if we close and settle below 105 and a half, so what we'll be looking for here is from evidence from the pit session chart is we're going to open up with a big gap to the downside around 107.5, and we're going to look for some support right around that 106.80, right? We got 106.5, right? And that big levels of support that we could possibly maybe buy off of. So as I mentioned, the RBOB and the heating oil are going to be leading the way lower. We've been watching volatility, rather firm. And the thing is, I remember on Sunday night, my uh, colleague West Odell, who does commodities cast, he said to me, Marty, isn't it strange volatility has been rising? And we've been watching really uh, crude rising with volatility. Usually it's a little strange. So vol is right now sitting at about 27% in the implied volatility. Now, whichever way volatility moves is going to give us an idea of where we're going to go. So on our charts here, you can see we do have some high percentage trade setting up, right? We could come in and we can buy these, uh, we can buy these support, right? And we're going to get a little bit of a retrade. This can balance, but still looking overall some downside now that all this geopolitical news is out of the way. So I wouldn't say the news is official yet, so that's why I'm thinking come in and we can maybe get some buying opportunities around 107, even right, that 107, uh, 106 half level, that range that we have here, coming in and buying these levels. And then ultimately, if we don't buy and we don't hold those levels, then we'll see that 105 half, and we can sell down to it, right? So if this 107 even and the 106 half do not hold, then we can sell down to 105 half. Right? If they do not hold, because here's the support. It's all on both the pit session chart and also our globex session chart. The support levels are right here, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at first and foremost. As I mentioned, up and heating oil, both have been trading lower with volatility associated. That's conviction right there. That's conviction. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for high volatility with the down tick. So if vol starts to rise and we get that conviction with the crude. That would be very bare. Dollar, ladies and gentlemen, minimum rising, making it back up into the $2 handle almost. So that's going to be another indication of a risk on sentiment, right? Equity markets may fuel to the fire. Right now, equities are kind of sitting positive right now, to, uh, mixed across the board, but they're all positive, right? So all these equity markets are positive. So now we could be looking to, again, come in and buy some levels of support, right? And if they don't hold, then we're going to sell down the 105 half, and it'll be a very exciting day. Real quickly, let's... Bring it on over to our like little um, little worksheets here, right? And then I want to talk about natural gas. Cause I got a killer trick for you guys. And if you come and join today, I'll tell you guys a little bit about it. Oh, hang on. All right. So now we see the sideways range. You see our down tick, right? We're lower across the board. We're going to come in and try to buy support levels. If not, if they hold, them, we're going to go down the 105 half. Very simple plan of attack. Dollar higher. All of our commodity currencies lower. We have all of our spreads, right? Brent WTI spread. We have the Oc Novi, Oc Dis, Novi Dis, all looking bearish here this morning, guys, with just the exception of one of our spreads in the back out months. Spreads are going to be key here, guys. This is what's going to help us get a good indication on direction. The spreads today will be key. I can't tell you guys enough. We have to really, really focus on the front month spreads as if they are going to widen out or tighten up, right? In the Brent WTI spread, very important here. So this is what's going to give us an idea on direction. Real quickly, before we hit levels, let's talk about natural gas here. Look at this natural gas chart. I'm loving it so much here today. So right now we've been seeing where this was uh, this channel, right? We said, oh, we're going to get a 50% retrace, right, after buying the lows yesterday. So what did we do? We got that retrace back up to the 362, and now we're going to come in and sell this retrace back on down, and then we're going to chop around, right? I just put in that blue line because I think we're going to consolidate, chop around between uh, 355 up to 360. Right, we're going to chop it 355, 360. We're going to keep them buying and selling that range because we're going to get consolidated, consolidated. Because what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's going to be inventories. I mean, uh, Thursday's going to be inventory. So we're going to consolidate till we get inventory numbers, and we'll pop out either way after inventory. So my idea here is we're going to probably come in and try to buy these lows at 355, even 355, sell the 360, and we're going to trade within that range because now that we got that retrace, that's what's going to be in store. That's what the spreads are telling us sideways trading. Um, Right now, if you look here at just some of the other spreads real quickly, I know I gave you the overall direction on the spread, but I just want to give you guys some prices so you can remember where they were this morning. So when we refer back to them, you guys remember Brent WTI spread right now is trading at 40. It's in 
30 cents backwardation, a little bearish right now. Um, even if you look at it, the outer month um, Brent WTI spreads are all bearish because we're in the middle of a roll on the Brent, by the way. Uh, looking at your month crude oil calendar spreads now, right? Octnovi, it's about 96 cents and it's lower on the day, so that's bearish, right? Octis, uh, 2.45, 25 cents lower on the day. So we just the correlations between the calendar spreads and the Brent WTI spread are just a little different, but that's how we use them to get the direction and we nail it every day. Volatility right now just ticked up another uh, vol to 28%. So this is going, this might be that conviction that we need, right? Volatility rises with this downward market. So again, we're going to be watching these levels here on the charts real quickly on both the Globex and the Pit Session charts right here to see if we can hold. And if they don't hold, that's 107 even. Right, and 106 half, just to sum it up. If they don't hold, then we're going down the 105 half. And if we don't hold above 105 half, then we're really going down to about 102. All right, guys, let's take a quick look on over into our levels here. So, right, we're going to try to come in and buy the 107 and buy the 106 half. And if they don't hold, then we're going lower. Here you are, levels from yesterday, pit session high, 110.20. The low is at 109.26. Closing settlement number was at 109.5. So you can see the huge gap that we're going to have to the downside, right? Settlement number, closing settlement number was 109.53, and right now I believe we're currently trading around uh, 107.65, so that's going to be a huge gap down. Okay, resistance up above, I got 110.06, 110.60, 111.54, support down below, 109.12, right, we got that, uh, 108.72, 107.69. 79, which we broke below, so let me just add in this here. Look, let me show you. So now we have, right, 107.12, right? We'll even call 107 even. This is so exciting. And then we have 106 and a half. And if they don't hold, 105 is our next target. This is so exciting to see. This is going to be great. Okay. So open interest here has been showing a little bit of a short position coming into the market, 245,500. 80 on the open interest for your V, which is the October contract. November open interest, 212695 which are going to be changing at the opening bell. Let's take a quick look on over into, again, your volatility rise is 28%, 28.5 on the OVX. Largest strikes that traded, we had the 110, 112, 114 calls. But again, we have activity here, 107 puts, right, 107 puts. 105 half, 102 halves, and 100 puts. But look at the 107 put they put a little money into yesterday. So that's the exciting part of it because they started to see the divergence in the RBOP and heating oil first. Let's look at the natural gas levels as we are looking again to buy the lows at 355 and sell the highs at 360. It's like we're probably going to consolidate within a range after having such a large move over the last couple of days and nailing our game plan of attack every day on the call here with uh, JJ with his thank you with JJ as well because he's been helping us out with the natural gas charts. Um, let's talk about here, 360 was your high, and 361, sorry, excuse me, was your high on your natural gas yesterday. Your low is 355.70. I believe we trade right within that range. We buy the low of the day, right, we're going to buy the, the previous low. Closing settlement number was 360.80. Today, your daily pivot, 359.20. Once again, that's 359.20 was your daily pivot today, and right now we are trading at 357.70, so we actually are below daily pivot. Resistance up above, I got 362.70, 365.20, and 371.20. Support down below, I got 357.40, 353.90, uh, and 348.60, right? All levels of support down below. So far, open interest, 180,340 with that volatility at about 32% and 31%. So I just want you guys to keep an eye on these levels, right? So 350 calls, 370 puts. So we're going to buy 350s. And we're going to try to sell, again, those 360s and 370s. So that's it, you guys. Those are your levels for today. Those are your worksheets for today. Keep in mind, we just had, um, by the way, some numbers hit the board. We had the uh, NFIB Small Business Optimism come out. Ramatha comes out 94. We are expecting 95, so just a bit lower than expectations. Remember, we talked about the OPEC news that came out. OPEC expects uh, their demand for crude to average about 29.6% million barrels per day, and it's actually lower by about 320,000 barrels per day. So they're going to be uh, cutting that just a bit. And then remember that geopolitical news that we just mentioned here about um, Syria accepting Russia's proposal to put their chemical weapons under international control. And then we have David Cameron saying, wow, that's a great idea, and I support that. I think that's a really good idea to trying to avoid that attack. So 
again, uh, President Obama, I saw one of his interviews this morning and last night that he had on uh, NBC, and remember, he's also going to be coming out across the board today in the primetime speech at 9 o'clock. All righty, guys, remember, APIs come out tonight. Check the blog for API numbers. Me and JJ will have them posted up tonight, and uh, we're going to have a big, busy day in the pit. I'm feeling it here, guys, today. Got a lot of guys filling up already for the gold pit session open, so I think we're going to have a lot of people in the crew as well today. So um, let's rock and roll. Good trading to you. Let's throw it back on over to JJ now in Los Angeles. Well, I'll tell you, Marty, that's the type of action I'm talking about. We definitely need a, a shot in the arm here, get this, get this week going here without any major news. Uh, no major news in the calendar today. As we said yesterday, no news is really big news right now because that means we're going to be lingering, hanging by a thread here, listening in for more news coming out of Syria. Uh, the White House, of course, Marty and I have been talking about that ongoing here throughout the entire call today. So you know what the plan is today. Most of us are looking short here this morning. Uh, we got to be wise, though, about when we pull the trigger on those shorts. We're not selling directly into support. We're not selling directly into major buy zones. So stay focused on the targets we posted for you guys on the blog this morning. As always, those blog updates are done throughout the day on SidewaysMarkets.com. So check back later today for more information on what's happening in our live trade room. And also, one more thing, too, I want to remind you guys, if you have any feedback for us, I would love to hear what you love, what you hate. Would you like to see more of something, less of something? Send us your feedback. I'm JJ at School of Trade, and that was Marty at Traders Audio. Don't forget to log in and check out Marty and his partner, Jeffrey. They do a great job every morning at Traders Audio with their broadcast. And come see me Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, in our live trade room over at School of Trade. Signing off now here from Los Angeles, California, from the entire team here at School of Trade, Traders Audio. And you guys have a great day out there. On a 23-hour and 30-minute break, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning. 7.30 a.m., Monday through Friday. I'll see you guys tomorrow. 23-hour, 30-minute break. Be careful out there. See you guys tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.